What's up everybody, Big Sweet C here with you, got a special little video for you. Today, I want to talk about a game that I missed when it originally came out for Game Boy back in 1993, but they redid it in an HD style 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. It's called Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. We stream this over on Twitch, so be sure to head on over there, hit that follow button if you want all the cool live streams for the Sweetness channel. But this one, we're going to kind of focus on what I thought of the game. Now, before I do get into what I think, I do want to say that as of March 2021, the game has sold almost 5.5 million copies worldwide, which makes it one of the best-selling Nintendo Switch games of all time. And it is truly, truly deserved. This game was developed by Gretzo, published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch, an HD remake of Link's Awakening from the original Game Boy version that came out in 1993, but the remastered version here, the HD upgrade, is phenomenal. The game itself is an action-adventure game with top-down perspective. Uh, it takes, uh, takes place on Colahint Island, where Link the player character is stranded after a ship is caught up in a storm. After being rescued by a girl named Marin, Link embarks on a quest to collect the eight instruments of the sirens and awaken Cola Hint's legendary windfish in order to escape the island. Now, when I was playing through this game, and kind of the way that it alludes to, it kind of seems like, from what I've heard of the lore of this game, it's actually uh, a dream that Link is having right now, and not an actual adventure. Uh, but as you play uh, throughout the game, they, they tell you that, hey, this is going to be a memory, this dream is going to be a memory, so that memory is going to make it real. Uh, but that kind of little side story about the, uh, about the others, <laughs> about the game. Uh, truly, all in all, this game was phenomenal. The, uh, it, it's, it's a traditional Zelda game, so if you like the old style Zelda games, even to an extent a little bit of um, Breath of the Wild in terms of the action adventure, Breath of the Wild is a little new age. This one's more of kind of the old age games. Uh, seems kind of simplistic at first. It's got kind of a kiddie vibe when it, when you look at the artwork and everything. Reminds me a lot of, say, like Animal Crossing and whatnot. Uh, but the truth is it actually kind of gave it a better feel to it because it kind of gave you this idea that it was this dream land, right? That you were actually in a dream and not in the real world. And um, it definitely kind of gives it that vibe. Uh, but you got the various mini games, you know, you get a, a sword and shield, you get the upgrades to the, your sword, you get the mirror shield like you do. There's the eight dungeons like there is in a normal Zelda game. The dungeons are phenomenal. Uh, they are very well put out. There was a few of them. Now, the first couple you kind of get through pretty easy, but the last couple, I mean, they... They were good. It took me probably an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes to get through those two dungeons because the way they set up, they were designed very, very well. Uh, so if you like puzzle games, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, there were, there are kind of what seems like a lot of side quest stuff with the shell, seashells and the heart pieces and whatnot. Uh, but we were able to go through the whole game. I found... Um, all but I think four of the seashells and I think I found all but maybe six or seven of the heart pieces uh, And we, we got it all done in about 15 or 16 hours. So it's not a super long game It's one of those really kind of fun ones that you can kind of play in a in a short period of time You don't have to put a lot of investment into it, but you still get a lot of a, a lot of fun out of playing it and and um, In some cases, I actually think those are the best because it encourages kind of going through and playing it again uh, I don't know if there's like a new game plus uh, version, but there are like there is a bonus dungeon that you can get, which was in the original game after you beat everything. Um, and then they added this uh, create your own dungeon feature with Dampy in this one uh, that is absolutely fantastic. I've probably done two or three, created two or three of my my own dungeons and played them, uh, and it, it's quite the. Uh, Quite the experience putting them together and then playing them because, I mean, I've always thought that these dungeons would be easy to play, to make because they kind of just throw them all together. Uh, but when you get into it, you kind of then you get into the dungeon and you kind of get confused of, you know, what your idea was. And uh, this, you know, kind of gives you a different perspective on, on this 
dungeon adventure that you go on with uh, with Link. Uh, and so that was that was actually really really cool as well. Uh, but it uh, you know I don't have much to say about it. It's a Zelda game. It's kind of I love Zelda. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie. Like Zelda is one of maybe the only franchise where like I can just like look at the game. It says Legend of Zelda on it, and I can pretty much assure myself that I'm gonna enjoy the game. Uh, and that's because the the people who created the Legend of Zelda uh, are still in some sort of creative control on it, and uh, they you know they they take pride in their product. Uh, it, it's not like it's not like Bungie where they've basically let Destiny 2 go by the wayside because it's not as popular as it was when it first came out. Uh, it's not like Activision who treats all their employees like pieces of trash. This, the people of Zelda really seem like they put the product first and that is, it's completely on display here in this game because it was a phenomenal remake uh, where it kept all of what made the original so fantastic and just updated it to today's kind of standards and the fact that you know all they had to do was add this like dampy shack and it's still such a fun game from 20 years ago really goes to show how much how much actual love and care they put into their product unlike a lot of these companies today i mean how many times anthem is a good one uh cyberpunk 2077 CD Projekt Red tried to make that game for like dozen years and it still came out like trash. And so it, it it really kind of really kind of emphasizes the difference be between Nintendo and and everybody else and why it's not hard to see why Nintendo is still such a big player in the video game industry even though Xbox and Sony uh, have basically dominated for the better part of the last 10 to 15 years. Um, but I, uh, if you happen to have a Nintendo Switch, I think it's forty bucks. If you can buy it on sale, because I, I don't know, I don't know if it's really worth forty dollars, considering it's just an HD remake of a new game. But I found it worth the forty dollars. You might find it worth the forty dollars. My brother found it worth the forty dollars. Almost five and a half million people around the world found it worth the forty dollars. Uh, I'm always down. If you can find it on sale, find it on sale. But. Um, no, but the truth is, this is this is probably worth the forty bucks uh, to buy a new release of it because uh, it was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I know this review didn't really say a whole lot about the game itself; it was more about the franchise of Zelda uh, than the actual game. But um, but this is definitely a big part of that franchise, and um, it's it's totally worth it. I, uh, I can't wait to jump in, and uh, we're going to get the Skyward Sword HD update. Now, that one I had played on Nintendo Wii. Uh, unfortunately, the Wii didn't do nearly as well as I think Nintendo thought it was going to. They didn't put any kind of marketing into it like they do the Nintendo Switch. Uh, but it was, it was a fantastic game, and I think this HD remake for the Switch will give people a chance to realize that they slept on one that was good. And so I, I look forward to getting into that, uh, and then I look forward to playing... All the Zelda games, whenever the Zelda games come out, Breath of the Wild 2, because they're always fantastic. They're always worth it, um, and they're always some of my favorite games that I play uh, when I play them. So, definitely, definitely recommend. Two thumbs up for Zelda Link's Awakening. That makes two reviews in a row that I've generally really liked the game that we played. Uh, so we're on a good roll. <laughs> We're on a good roll for the year. It's gonna make the uh, top five of the year really hard to uh, really hard to to pick out. But um, I'd rather have too many top five choices than not enough. So uh, if you happen to have a Nintendo Switch, you happen to have forty bucks laying around, do yourself a favor, pick up Zelda: Link's Awakening because it is fan fantastic. But uh, that's enough out of me. Big Sweet C, that's me wishing YouTube, that's you, wonderful day, night, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it might be long as you're watching, I'm wishing you a wonderful watching time. If you are having a wonderful watching time, do me that favor. Hit that like, hit that sub, hit that notification bell so you know when I do drop a new video or go live. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this one good? Did they do a good job on the remake? Was Dampy's uh, edition worth it? 
did the game fall flat of expectations? Do you not like the artwork of it? Do you think it looks too kitty? Do you think they needed to upgrade it a little bit? I, I'm always generally, uh, generally excited to read comments, so do me a favor, do that as well. Uh, if you want more of the Sweetness family, head on over to Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow me over there, at BigSweetC. Either way, that's going to do it for this one. Sweetness, signing off. Peace.